We want to welcome those that are tuning in onto our Facebook Live and to our Oklahoma web page. Also, you can watch directly live on Martha's page and then watch on ours later. Um, but we thank you for tuning in. Please make sure that this ministry is making a difference in your life by hitting like and share. This morning, we're going to be opening with a discipleship series for the month of February, and it's entitled Grow. Grow is a, a powerful ministry to which we are using to reach people in our community. And I'm going to start the first of four discipleship teaching series on a Sunday morning. Now, I believe that there are evangelistic times that you can preach on a Sunday morning. You're really trying to target the lost. I believe that there's another key ingredient to grow the church, and that's a prayer meeting. I believe you should be excited about God, but I also believe that in prayer meeting, a church that prays together, stays together, and sees the, the work of the Holy Spirit moving in a community and in the lives of the community. But I also believe that discipleship, you see, it's great to get saved. It's great to pray to God. But we are to grow in wisdom and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, often we do that on Sunday mornings evangelistic, Wednesday night's prayer meeting, and often Sunday night and Sunday school are discipleship time. It's not always that we have to do it in that order. I believe Sunday morning can be a great time of discipleship as well. One of my mentors over the years, Brother Roland Brown, made this statement to me years ago. He said this, he said, all teaching is not preaching, but all preaching must be teaching. Let that seep in for just a few moments. Because if you don't learn anything from the message, then you haven't, decided, it, it, then you haven't learned anything at all. It wasn't communicated clearly. There was no genuine discipleship. Well, this morning, we're going to be rolling pretty quickly through a discipleship lesson. So if you're here in our congregation or out in the parking lot worship, strap on your pew belt, your seat belt, or just buckle down there on your phone and don't hit swipe, you just hang in there because we're going to learn about what GROW and the GROW ministry really is all about. You see, first thing that you need to learn and you need to understand is the history of GROW. The history of GROW is this. God rewards good work, or go reach our world. It's an acronym, meaning that we are to go out and to get everybody that we come in contact with, and it's an organized plan how we're to do that. It's going to do it in a few different ways, and it's based upon three bases of outreach. These three bases of outreach, you'll see these grow here on the chart, is that it meets people's needs for God. We realize people have a need for the Lord. I believe that He is the only hope that this world has, and I still believe people need the Lord. But also, God desires to have fellowship with people. He loves you. We should not only want to be close to Him, but He wants to be close to us. And also, we must understand what GROW is, is it is His master's plan for evangelism and outreach. It's God's model of what we are to do. So therefore, if you're going to do something, especially as a church, make sure you have a biblical foundation and a biblical answer for why you're doing what you are doing. There's five principles that you will see here within GROW. And what are these five principles? What are the five key things that you really must have is a coach. You're going to have to have a leader. Now, a coach who will not settle for anything less than winning. I am thankful that Roy Chapman has stepped up to be the director of our GROW team. Roy is very competitive by nature. Roy wants to be a part of a winning team. Roy wants to still, it's, it's his drive that keeps him going. You'll see that either on the basketball court or at a grow team meeting. He's very intentional. He'll ask our youth, are you serious? Are you serious? Are you serious about the work to which you're doing? You need a coach like that to head up a team. Now that leads us to the next thing, a team. A team that is willing to work hard. 
Grow was already started here in Oklahoma, even prior to my coming. I did a grow training whenever I first came as a refresher to all of you all, and I was amazed at the turnout that we had within this congregation at that time frame. In fact, you'll hear more that there were four teams. We had 10 people sign up per team. We had 40 people within Oklahoma that had signed up to be a part of a grow team when we first came. I believe it needs to be grow revamped. I think we need to regrow. But we have the opportunity for a wonderful team right here. Also, you've got to have a strategy. Now, right now, everybody's wondering, what do we do? How do we do? What, where are we able to do? I want it to be a strategy that's going to be a safe strategy. Even without COVID, we can reach uh, people in a safe manner. But we will have to navigate differently. A strategy that a team can carry out. And I believe we can still do grow. In fact, we have been doing grow, but we've been doing grow a little different. You're saying, why are you teaching grow right now? Are we supposed to be going door to door, knocking on places and helping? No, but we're going to get back to it again. You see, COVID, this too shall pass. And we will use this time frame as a time of training. And we have a plan because we're coming and we're coming to get people to be a part of the Lord. Now, it's very important within Grow that you have that you're matching, that you're matching people in positions to which they feel comfortable with. There are some people that are quiet, and that's okay. And there are some people that are very outgoing. That's okay. Grow has a place for you. And if you try to put somebody in an awkward position, it's not going to work. You have to make them as a joy and not a you have to make their position a joy and not a job so you got to match up people where they feel comfortable with also you got to have the right attitude and that attitude is expect to win if somebody comes and visits the church our goal is is to win them first and foremost for the lord we want to win them because my goal and hope is to see them walk down the aisle we want to see them get into a deeper relationship with the lord Get plugged into a Sunday school class. Get plugged into the church. Get plugged into the women's group. Get plugged into the men's group. Get, get plugged into the youth. Get plugged into the senior adults. We want to we want to see them become part of us and getting plugged in here. And that I have an expectation to win. Folks, if you don't expect to see somebody come forward or respond to the message, then maybe you need to reevaluate how you're presenting the message. I have a hope and an expectation of someone to walk down the aisle, even in a discipleship meeting. I have a hope and an expectation to see everybody go over and sign up to say, I'll be a part of a grow team. I have an expectation, I have an attitude that I want to see us win and win folks for the Lord and be a part of it. So, grow is biblically based and Christ-centered, and it focuses on not only helping an individual church grow, but the entire kingdom grow. Maybe we see them come forward and be a part of the family of Oklahoma. And you know what? I've been doing this long enough now that I wonder how many people have gotten involved into a church somewhere that I've been able to personally minister to. They may not come directly to Oklahoma. And it's amazing. You may invest your time, cards, calls, and energy into somebody, and they may start going to a different church. Guess what? That's okay. I want to see kingdom growth, not just Oklahoma growth. Can we hear an amen to that this morning? I want to see folks serve the Lord where the Lord's calling them to serve. That is the mindset. There's a second principle to grow this morning that I'd like to share with you. It's called the sowing and reaping. The sowing and reaping mindset. That sowing and reaping mindset, this, this principles of grow, are first found in Matthew 13, 57, 58. The Bible says, And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. It was difficult whenever Jesus went back to his hometown of Nazareth. You know, he would have loved to see everybody get saved, and he would have had rejoiced to do many a miracle there. But it is unfortunate that they were not willing to receive them because they were of them. You know who some of the hardest people it is to witness to? Who is the hardest people to witness to? Your family. You know why? Because they know you 
best. And you know how hard it is to witness in your community? Because they know somebody that goes down to that church down there. You are a walking witness and testimony to the community to which we live in. And if we're going to give them something to talk about, let's give them something good to talk about. Let's talk about what they're doing for the Lord. They're always doing something down there at that church. Those lights are always on. They're busy. They're active. They're working because they love this community. And we love Nancy. And we love this, we love this county. And we love this country. And we still love this world. And we're working very diligently to reach them. We must have a high level of expectancy that God is going to do something great. And we must not be guilty of the sin of unbelief. If you just say, well, we don't know anybody. Did you realize that we did the demographics of right here at Oklahoma? And you may say we're out in the country. There isn't nobody in here that doesn't know the church. Do you know that we did a demographics of a one mile, three mile, and a five mile circular radius? That'll take you about to the park and about down to the lake uh, over in Wayne County. In a five mile circular radius, do you know how many people there are right here under our nose? 10,000 people. 10,000 in a five mile radius. And they're depending on us to be the beacon of light, to come and say there is a hope and his name is Jesus Christ. But don't be unbelieving, be believing. Galatians 6, 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. My head, I think I am. I am a head one, I'm sorry. That he shall also reap. You know what? Here's the great principle. Put this in your notes if I don't have it written down for you. We may sow some seeds that never yield a harvest. However, if you never plant any seeds, you could guarantee there won't be a harvest. You can't sow a seed that's going to be wasted. You may throw the seeds out and they may never grow, but you can guarantee it's never going to grow unless you throw the seeds out. That is a great principle found in Galatians 6-7. 1 Corinthians 3, primarily verses uh, 6 through 9, the Bible says, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. A true harvest comes about with teamwork, and there is no I in team. One plants, another waters, but it's God who gives the increase. Right now we are, and I believe on the back end of COVID, it will still linger for a little while. We will still see some effects, but I'm going to share this with you. Right now, many a sheep have scattered in many a congregation. There is no sheep stealing used to be what's called in the church terms. Right now, we don't know where everybody has scattered or where everybody has went, but I'm going to guarantee you this. Oklahoma is going to be the ones to cast out the net, and any strays that have gotten away, you have a place right here. We'd like to corral you in right here at Oklahoma. If you have a home church, you need to be at your home church. Get back. They need you. They're looking for you. And they want you there. And you are a key element to the growth and the health of that church. We want everybody to have a fresh start and to be welcomed and to come here and to be a part of a thriving, growing congregation. So with that said, it's going to take a team effort. All of us, every single one of us, to be here. And it's going to need to be a place that you can get involved, involving every member. There's a place for you. You're a part of the body. You are valuable, and we need you. And your church needs you. All churches, they need people. That's what the church is made up of. There's the principle of involving absolutely every member. Grow has a variety of ways that a person can be involved regardless of how timid or bold somebody might be in their place on the team of growth. It is a design and a way to help a member find a place where they can serve. There's three key tools that we use in our plan to grow and to reach our world. The first is 
using technology, and you can make a phone call. A phone call can count as a text message or some means of communication that you can send to somebody. Reaching out and letting them know, we care for you and what's going on. Make a phone call. Maybe you're not up for visiting right now. A lot of, a lot of people aren't. I get it. But we can use the telephone and we can come on a grow night and call individuals and just let them know we're thinking about them. Also, you can make uh, cards and letters. I am so excited here at Okalona, the number of cards that I see go out every month. They send out birthday cards, anniversary cards, welcome cards, informational letters, informational news. We send it out. And folks, if you're saying, I never hear anything from that church down there, nobody loves me, nobody's ever reached out to me, it's for one of two reasons. We either do not have your information, or we have incorrect information, and you've just not been receiving it. So if you'd like to get us your information, we'd be glad to keep you in our newsletters and get you up to par. Grow works very well to do that. Another one is visits. Well, right now, we can do visits and we can do visits safely. It may mean that we knock on, knock and stand out in the yard and we stay at a distance. It might mean that we drive separate vehicles to get to our destination. It might mean that we go and we just leave a gift bag on somebody's porch and let them know that we care about them. It might mean that maybe you just call somebody and say, hey, we're in town, we're gonna come back through, we're gonna drop you off a little dinner or a little pack tonight. Whatever it takes, to stay connected with people. That's what GROW is all about. That's what being part of the church is really all about. Matthew 28, 19 summarizes it like this. It was the will of the Lord, Jesus Christ, that all members be involved whenever he uses the term, go ye therefore. That means go you. It's not just somebody else's job. And it may not be your night of grow, but maybe you need to go and just be a part of it. It's a team effort. It's a team help. Everybody can get involved in it. Matthew 4, 19 says, And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. To effectively be a part of grow, you've got to be intentionally a go-getter and fisher of men. I don't normally use my family as illustration, but everybody knows Dustin is a fisherman of fishermen. And I guarantee you he's cast more times and reeled in his lure than he's reeled in a fish. Don't bank on how many times you've cast and cast and haven't caught. You've got to keep thinking about and having the mindset of the one that's out there and you just keep casting and keep casting and keep casting. And I'm going to tell you what, just as Martha said, if this website ministry reaches just one, it's worth going after. Can I hear an amen to that? It's worth it all. Keep casting. Keep being fishers of men. Don't quit. And I'm going to tell you, you may land a big one. You may land that one that somebody's been watering and feeding for a very, very long time. And nobody's reeled them in yet. They're just waiting on you to say, why don't you invite me? I'm going to use illustrations. They've went on to be with the Lord now, but Stanley and Linda, as they were, uh, not Stanley and Linda, but Stanley and, help me, the Coopers. Stanley and Ann, thank you. I got Stanley and Linda on my mind, I'm sorry. I got Linda on my mind. Sounds like a Conway Twitty song, doesn't it? <laughs> Stanley and Ann, whenever we were at Ferguson, we would have Sunday school. Sunday school used to start at 10 o'clock, but they would get there about 10, 15. Stanley and Ann would come and they would sit in the congregation while all the other church, all the other classrooms was active and going on, Stanley and Ann would be out in the congregation. I made mention to one of the Sunday school uh, teams and directors and I said, Stanley and Ann get here at 10, 15 all the time. I said, they're in here out in the sanctuary and they're the first ones in. Why don't you go ask them to be a part of a Sunday school class. They went over, asked them to be a part of a Sunday school class, and guess what happened? They joined a Sunday school class, and they asked a very simple question. What was it that made you join the class? And they said, we were just waiting for somebody to ask us. 
My goodness, fruit's on the vine out there about ready. It's so ripe, it's about to fall off. They're just waiting on somebody to show an interest in them and to care for them. And they may be closer than you think. It may be your next door neighbor. It may be your coworker. Maybe they've been asked many a time. You just ask them one more time. But it involves everybody. You go. Now, I'm going to tell you what. Here's something that's really neat. You can have fun at church. You can be a Christian and have a good time. It's not work. It's worship. And it is a lot of fun. I believe that you can have fun with outreach. Some of the best times is not going on vacation. It's not the destination. It's the journey. Some of the funnest times I have at a grow meeting is the guys that I get in a vehicle with and we have conversations on the way there. It's fun. It's fun whenever we gather together and we pray and we are concerned about each other. So it's not just the people that, and the fish that we're going to catch. It's about the people that we get to have fellowship with right in the midst of it. Grow is a great time to get involved and it is so fun. I remember my old friend Michael Hawkinsmith who's went on to be with the Lord. I remember going on Monday night visitations. This isn't about me, this isn't an I statement, but I believe that we need to be a visiting kind of church. And I remember when I first started in ministry, I said, I'm going to go and I'm going to knock on doors. I'm going to go and I'm going to visit. And uh, I prayed for somebody to go with me. I'm going to also go to Jeff Sexton here in a moment too. You'll hear these names. It may be out of my notes, it may be out of line, but I just want y'all to hear my story and my testimony why I believe in growth and the joy that I have with it. When I surrendered to ministry in 02, uh, we were at a church. I was associate pastor, but we made a transition into evangelism, and there was very few Sundays that I didn't preach somewhere. I may get a call even on that Sunday morning to come preach somewhere. For about two, two and a half years, we was evangelist. I had two children and a baby on the way. I was going to seminary, beautiful family, son that could play and sing. And, and, and uh, I would go, and sometimes I'd wear a sweater and blue jeans, sometimes I'd wear a suit. Sometimes I'd tell them I was a preacher, sometimes I wouldn't. You know? And out of those two and a half to three years, I had three preachers come and visit me, or three representatives from a church. It may not be the preacher, but I had three representatives in two and a half years come and knock on our door. Out of all the churches that we would visit and so forth, you would think, a prospect for your church. And it was very disheartening to not have much interest to say, what's wrong with us? Why don't nobody want us? And I vowed and I said, if I ever get a church, Lord, I'll visit. I'll knock. I'll keep a note. And, I, and you can see we had a great Sunday school this morning. I'll keep tabs on who's here. I'll try my best to learn names as Stanley does. I'll do my best to try to learn the flock and the congregation and the people. If you'll give me that opportunity. Rain or shine, bad weather, every Monday night I was going and visiting, going and visiting, going and visiting. When the Lord blessed me with the church, and I'm so thankful to be a part of the church. Whenever I got in, I said, I'm going. And night after night, I would go by myself. I'm sorry, it's the truth, but I would go by myself on Monday nights. And you're supposed to go out at least two by two for safety reasons. But I was said, I'm going. And I'd go and I'd knock, and I'd go and I'd knock, and I'd go and I'd knock. And I said, Lord, send me somebody. That's back in the days whenever I would put in my phone or on the Internet and I would try to pull up maps and try to find places. And, and I would spend more of my time just trying to find out the demographics of the land and the roads and trying to find the place than I would actually reach the place. So if I could actually try to go out and find four houses, if I could find two, I did pretty good. I'd spend all Monday night evening to find two houses. It's worth it. I said, Lord, I need somebody to go with me. And uh, I need help. Jeff came, and Jeff said, Brother Jason, I'll go with you. And I said, Jeff, I thank you for that. Jeff got in the car with me. Now, Jeff had one leg. Jeff was diabetic, and he only had one leg. And, and Jeff was, uh, and Jeff, if you're watching, I love you, but it's the facts, and I'm saying it as though you're standing here now. Jeff was needing a place to serve. Jeff needed somebody with him, and I needed Jeff. And Jeff got in the vehicle with me, and I just needed somebody. And Jeff said, I'll go with you. I'd pull up, 
on Monday night, he'd be sitting out on his front porch. Let me tell you something. Man, I'm going to just share it with you. Jeff, I'm not saying this to embarrass, but it's the facts. Whenever I went to pick up Jeff, he was so excited. He was always out on the front porch waiting and ready to go. It might be 90 degrees outside. Jeff be sitting out on the front porch waiting to go. He couldn't wait till I'd come pick him up. He'd come and get in the vehicle with me, and we'd take off. I'd drop Jeff back off. We'd go in some nice houses, and we'd go in some okay houses. Jeff never asked me for anything. Never asked me for a dime, never asked me for nothing, but if you go with me, I'd be sure to go through the drive-thru and try to get you an ice cream or a frosty. And I'd always try to offer to help. Jeff never asked me for anything. I'm going to tell you what, my finding two houses came into four, and I'm like, Jeff, I'm trying to find this. And he'd be like, well, it's right over here. And I'm like, well, how do I get there? He said, well, just cut through here, cut over there, and so forth. I'm like, Jeff, wow. We go to the next place. They'll like, cut through here, go right over here. I'm like, Jeff, how in the world do you know where all these places are at? He said this to me. He said, I used to be a cab driver before I lost my leg. He knew all the roads. He knew all the places. Man, the Lord put Jeff in my path to help be able to get us to go to homes and visits and make directions and so forth. I would pick up Jeff time and time again. I would pick up Jeff here again. And Jeff, a lot of times what he wore on Sunday is what he wore on Monday. And I found out why. Jeff sitting out porch, I was like, Jeff, why don't you go inside? It is burning up outside today. Jeff said, my air conditioner's broke. I didn't know that his air conditioner was broke. He never told me until then. I never went in Jeff's home. Jeff would always come outside. When I went in Jeff's house, Jeff didn't have an air conditioner. Jeff didn't have a stove. Jeff didn't have a washer and dryer. He never asked me for anything. And we'd go in some nice places. And yet I'm thanking God that he put Jeff in my life. Finally, Michael Hawkinsmith come on board. Me and Mike was unique Mike. And we'd go out and we'd go to some places that a lot of places wouldn't, people wouldn't even went and visited. And we'd go by an old motel and I'm like, wow, Mike. I, and I'd get a lot of calls from that certain motel, needing help throughout the week and so forth. And Mike had a whole different perspective, and he helped Jeff and I out so much. So now that we're the three amigos going out every Monday night, and whenever we would go by, I said, man, there we are. I said, I was just there, and I said it was, and I'd tell him about what I had encountered and some of the things that I had. And Mike would say, you know what I see? Every time we go by that place, he said, you know what I see? I don't see it as a motel of where the down and out are. He said, I see it as a mission field. Mike always saw the opportunities and not the obstacles. And he taught me that within visitation and without reaching to a lost and hurting world. And I'm so thankful and I'm so mindful of the joyous, fun times that we had in that van or in my truck or going through. And I'll tell you this, I hate to say it, but we made a visit. We drove way, way, way down in McQuarrie County one time just to go make a visit. We were on our back, way back through. I had two guys in the car with me. And we were coming in from that way, coming into Burnside, well, I was still going at a pretty good rate of speed. Don't get a speeding ticket while you're out on visitation, okay? That wasn't fun. But I sure doubt one. As I got pulled over, what do you say? Sorry, officer, we're out on visitation for our church. No. I set it as an example, and I said I was sorry, and I used it as a witnessing tool. Even in through that, God can use that. Have fun. Guys, it is fun. I didn't tell you a sob story. I told you the truth because I'm going to tell you what. We had more good days than we had uh, grief days. We had good times. But you'll never know the person that you might need grow the most might be the person that's riding with you or the person that's writing cards right beside you that are having troubles at home. Maybe the person that you're making phone calls with that just needed some interaction and some help from their own church family right there under their nose. That's what GROW can do. GROW goes and reaches our world, but go also, GROW also reaches our family right here. I want to share with you one of the last and final points. I went a little long because of my illustration, and I apologize for that. But Matthew 28, 19 says, It was the will of the Lord Jesus Christ that all members be involved, and go ye therefore. Then answered Peter, and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Folks, it's good to be here. 
It's good to be at church. It's good to be a part of a church family. It's good to be a part of a grow team where everybody can serve and be a part of. It's exciting. It's exciting times. Having fun at Grow. And it's good when you look at it, as Peter said, it's good that we should be here. And I'm going to tell you this. Make it a quality time greater than a quantity of time. While you're there, as Roy would tell you, are you serious? Don't miss the moments, but make sure you do what you're supposed to do while you're there. We try to set aside two hours. Two hours, and during that two hours, be as effective as you possibly can. Because somebody needed to hear from you. Make it a good quality time to get involved. What does that quality time look like? GROW stands for Team G, Team R, Team O, and Team W. That's four times a week. We had been serving and coming together on Thursday nights. That still may very well be the night. We might need to evaluate that. It's a good time to do it, as we're just talking about it. But you meet once a week. You could be a part of Team G. Who has two hours once a month? Two hours once a month. Two hours once a month. That's right, Hudson. He's got it. Two hours if you're on Team R for the second week of the month. Two hours for if you're on Team O. Two hours for the one. That means on average, you say, well, what about those that you have a fifth thirsty? I'm glad you asked. On a fifth thirsty, we all come together and we discuss and we, and we rehash and we learn and we learn from what the others have done. All of it. So we're asking you for 15 times a year, you could be a part of a mission program right here. And mission starts right where you are. It's a wonderful opportunity. Um, from 6 till 8 is what we have been doing. And our goal is to try to stop right at 8 o'clock to be mindful and try to start right at 6 o'clock. And we do it by focusing two hours as being as productive as we possibly can. Here's another thing that I want to share with you. Reaching out by divine appointment. You pray, before, you pray when you get here. You pray before you go out. You pray before you make calls. You pray before you write cards. And you ask the Holy Spirit to intervene. Because I believe that the Holy Spirit could be doing a lot of work even before that letter arrives. Even before that call or that card. Or even when you pull up. Because countless times have we pulled up at a home. And you would be surprised at the number of people that say, I'm glad you're here. And sometimes you'll be Surprise, some of them are surprised and say, I'm shocked you're here. I'm not saying this because of me, but we made a visit here within our community, and I had a lady that told us, she said, in my 30-plus years of living in this community, you are the first preacher to ever visit us. Let it never be said of our community right under our nose. We can reach out, and we can have a strategic plan to do so and to reach our people. Recognize that the Holy Spirit's at work. Acts 8, 26, 31 says the account of Philip being led by the Spirit to witness to the eunuch is a classic. It, it's a wonderful opportunity. He didn't understand it. He left during the time of a revival. Most folks think that you leave when things are going bad. There was a revival going on. Philip felt impressed upon the Lord to say, I know I've got an activity going on right here, but I'm going to move as the Lord leads. And he went somewhere else. Maybe you're out on a visit, and maybe you went to visit a home, and that person wasn't there, but you got to talk to the next-door neighbor. Maybe you got to talk to somebody else. Countless times I've went to the wrong address, but you made an impact that maybe only the Lord knew and knows exactly what was going on during that visit. i got to bring this to a head today. You all have been so awesome and been so wonderful. As already, I want to, I want to bring this to a, a head right here. Here's the quali qualifications for growth. Number one, are you breathing? Do you have a pulse? Then you qualify for growth. Number two, are you a uh, uh, are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Because I will say this: I believe that in order to go and be a witness and a testimony for the church, you do need to be a believer in what we're going out to do as a representative. And you would not be partnered up with somebody who's a novice. You need to know how to make a visit. If you've never made a visit before, it's amazing. Your first visit, I remember Robin Baker, whenever he became part of the visitation, or become a part of the grow team, he went with me and he said, I've never been on a grow visitation team before. I don't really know what to do. 
and like sit back and hold on. Here we go. We're going. And I mean, we had so much fun. And he did too. He'll tell you, he had a great time going on that Grove visit that night. Are you a believer? Let me ask you this. Will you make a commitment? Because if you can sit aside six to eight, you've got to make it as a priority. Just like coming to church, the devil will try to throw everything he can at you to keep you from being here. But you are a very important part of the church. And if you're going to say, I'm going to be a part of Team R or Team G you, or Team O or Team W, your team member is going to be looking for you. If you're a team member, you're going to hear more about this in the times ahead. You need to contact, as a team leader, you need to be contacted, but also as a member, you need to let your team leader know whether you can be there or you can't if emergencies arise. Because we're counting on you. And people out here in our community, they're counting on you. Also, are you correctly motivated? Are you doing this from a biblical manner? What does that look like? Are you going to do this because of love? And you're saying, why are you doing this during the month of February? Because here at Oklahoma, we love you with the love of Jesus Christ. And if you love God, you will love one another. And if you truly love one another, you'll love those that need to know the Lord and those that do know the Lord. It's a great thing. In fact, it's the job of the church. It's the call of the church. And I challenge you to be a part of GROW. Roy has signed up to be our director and leader. We've already got someone who has stepped up to be Team G's leader. John Kelly, you got voted in and want to do that as our Team G leader. And that's the first, whatever day it is right now, it's Thursdays of the month. Maybe you have another one that will be the, the team leader. Maybe you're in prayer about that. Maybe you're saying, I'm willing to serve. I'm glad you asked, and I'm glad you want to be part of the team because I have a sign-up sheet. And you're saying, when are we going to do this? We're not ready to go out and do it like we have been. We're just, this is a discipleship training month for you. But we do have a sign-up sheet. And if you're willing to be a part of this, we need to get our team ready. Right now, football season's not going on. In fact, you got the Super Bowl tonight. But high school football is not going on, but they're already in training for what's going to be happening for next season. We need to be getting ready to go witness and to be in training. If you're willing to be in prayer for this ministry, would you stand with me as we're going to dismiss in a word of prayer? I ask you to do that first and foremost. Be in prayer for this grow ministry. I ask you to be a part of this grow ministry. I ask you to be a part of what it means to be a witness and a testimony. So I want to invite you first to express your love for God. I also would like to see you express your love for a sinner and also express your love for this church. I know that you love this church. I know you love your God. And I know you love your community. So let's be a part of Team Grove. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray as we dismiss this afternoon, this is a discipleship message. It's to show the importance of a ministry. It's to get behind this ministry. I know that this church has done that in times past, but I believe that through COVID and this past year-long season, it's very easy to get complacent. And that's not the job of the church. We are to work as though you are coming back before tonight's service. We are to witness as though we are to work and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are to not be complacent. We are to be busy about your business. And GROW gives us such a great opportunity to do that. I'm praying right now that if somebody doesn't know you first and foremost, that they would get saved. And if they are saved, that they would commit to service. And GROW is a place of service where everybody can be involved. If they'd like to be a part of that, <laughs> If they'd like to come and pray about serving in that, I'm asking for true commitment as they sign up. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this church and for what it means to be a part of this church. We love you, and Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do through this ministry. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.